In this video, we're going to talk about the idea behind the fast modular exponentiation algorithm. So the setup is going to be three positive integers, a, n, and m. We would like to evaluate the remainder of when we divide a to the n by m. In mathematical notation, we would write this as a to the n mod m. In Python, we would write it as a double asterisk n and then percent m. The first idea to do this would be just to evaluate a to the n and afterwards find the remainder when we divide it by m. So the problem with this is that a to the n can be very large, especially if n is large. Even though Python can handle it, it's just going to take years of computing time to finish calculating it, and we'll never even get around to dividing it by m to find the remainder. So trying to calculate a to the n directly, and then afterwards dividing by m is not going to work for a problem like this. And fortunately, there is another way, which is the fast modular exponentiation algorithm. And here's a little snippet of code that will accomplish evaluating this remainder, a to the n mod m, even if n is very, very large. Uh, this code will easily find that remainder. And we just want to, ex in this video, we just want to explain what this algorithm is and why it works and what this code means. So that's the topic of this video. So the first thing to know is that we don't even need to calculate a to the n in order to calculate a to the n mod m. There's another way to do it, and this is the algorithm. So the idea is to first consider the binary expansion of n. So when we write n in binary, we can express n as the binary digits as b0 up to bt, and each bi is either 0 or 1. And BT will regard that as the most significant digit and B0 as the least significant digit. So we're using big endian notation here. And this is just saying another way that N is a summation from I equals zero to T of BI to the I. So we basically expand N as powers of two where each digit is zero or one. So now that we've rewritten N as that, A to the N can be rewritten as a to the power of that summation. And when we, do, when we do an exponent to a summation, we can break it up as a product, right? a to the power of, say, r plus s is a to the r times r a to the s. So we can split up our summation here into a product. a to the n is equal to the product of all these terms a to the power of bi two to the i from i equals zero to t. So notice this though, that remember that bi is either zero or one. In the cases where bi is zero, that term in that product is just a to the power of zero. Well, it's really a to the power of zero times two to the i, but zero times two to the i is zero. So a to the zero, and we just get one. So all the terms in that product that we just saw, just over here at the bottom, every term in there for which the binary digit is zero, that term is just one, and so it doesn't really contribute to the product. And for those i where the binary digit bi is one, in that case, we substitute one in for bi and we get the expression a to the power of two to the i. So a to the n is in fact just a product of a to the power of two to the i for i ranging on all the indices where the binary digit is non-zero. So that's our first interesting thing that we've found out. And just to make the notation a little easier here, why don't we let xi be a to the power of two to the i for i greater than or equal to zero. And we just another way to rewrite what we just said is a to the n is the product of those xi's where i ranges on all those indices where the binary digit is non-zero. Now let's just take a look at this sequence for a second. The very first term, which is x0, is a to the power of two to the zero, which is a to the one, which is a. So x0 is a, the first term is a. 
And there's a really nice little recursion here is that if we look at x sub i plus one, that's just the square of xi. If we follow the math there, it's pretty obvious. And so to proceed to the next term, all we need to do is square the term that we're at. And so we have a recursive sequence here starting at a, and to proceed to the next term, we just square the previous one. And we've actually just discovered an algorithm to calculate a to the n. We look at the binary expansion of n. We look at these this sequence we just talked about, xi, starting at 0 and then defined by that recursive relation. And a to the n, then, is just a product of some of those xi's. Which xi's? The xi's whose index i corresponds to an index where the binary digit bi is non-zero. Great. Now, remember that our goal is not really to calculate a to the n it's to calculate a to the n mod m. So what we can do is just take everything we've done and just mod it by m. So instead of xi, the real sequence we want to look at is yi, which is just defined as xi mod m. Now, there's an obvious rec recursive relation that also holds with this yi, and uh, the same thing holds, yi plus 1, is going to be the square of yi modded by m. And instead of writing a to the n as the product of the xi, now we can write a to the n mod m as the product of the yi's on those i for which bi is non-zero. So here we are. We finally have our full description for the algorithm for calculating a to the n mod m. The first thing we have to do is define the binary expansion of n, determine the binary expansion of n, let's say b0 up to bt in base 2. Then we define a sequence yi. We start at a mod m, and then to get to the next term, we square the previous yi, and we mod it by m. And we do this from 0 up to t minus 1. And now we have a formula for a to the n mod m. It's the product of these yi's, not all of them. We only take the product of the yi's where the binary digit bi is non-zero. And this is it. This is the algorithm. It kind of looks simple when we put it like this. And it's not that bad. We just have to implement this in code now. So the first thing we have to do is just remind ourselves, without regard to any of this exp exponentiation, fast modular exponentiation stuff, how do we get the binary expansion of n in code? So also note that since the computer stores the values in binary already in its memory, the asking for the binary digits of n is a very, very fast operation. This does not take any time at all. And this is really why this algorithm works. So let's say our binary expansion of n is like we used the notation before, b0 up to bt. And I just want to make sure you know that b0 is n and 1, n ampersand 1. This is just a basic definition of what the AND operator does, right? We imagine 1 as 1 with an infinite number of zeros to the left. And when we AND those two bit by bit, all those zeros erase every bit bi except for the bit b0. And so if we ever want to capture the least significant bit of n, the way to do it is we just AND it with 1. And so b0 will be either 0 or 1 there, depending on what, what it is. Now, more generally, for any value, or any bit we want, we can find it. All we have to do is we shift n over to the right by i positions in order to get that bit we're interested in in the least significant position, and then we add it with 1. It's the same idea. We just shift first, and then we add by 1. So this is a one way we can get all the bits, uh, values of of any integer n. So if we use these ideas, we can take this little snippet of code here and see that to print the digits in reverse, we just keep anding the n with 1 and then shifting it over by 1 and then repeating that. And when n becomes 0, after shifting it over sufficiently many times, then we know that our we've printed out all the binary digits. So in this way, we can uh, we understand how to grab all the bits of n. 
And let's just modify this idea a little bit to implement it in the algorithm we were just talking about. So if we start, if we just implement the algorithm we talked about, let R be the output value, okay? R is the return value. And Y is going to be our sequence YI. So when I write on the second line here of code, or the third line, Y is A mod M, I'm just defining Y0. Y0 is A mod M. And then I every bit we go through, if the bit is ever 1, then R, we just multiply that by Y, and we mod by M. Make sure... When I write this code right here, r equals r times y mod m, I want you to just relate that back to this product right here. This is exactly where that comes from. I'm taking a kind of a tally, a product tally, and I'm multiplying it on whatever the tally is. That's exactly what's going on on this line right here. And then when I write, uh, and I only do that if the bit is 1. Uh, but in all the time, no matter what, I always advance the value of yi. I don't write yi here. I just leave it as y, but it's the same thing. And just to make sure you understand this line here, y equals y times y mod m, that comes from right here. yi plus 1 is yi squared mod m. So I hope that... Is, and then n we shift over by one bit and then we keep cycling through all the bits that way and that's that's really the algorithm we've just talked about now maybe one small little change we can do here is instead of introducing y which is another letter it makes it a little bit more readable maybe why don't we just reuse the letter a because notice in this code we just use a at the beginning and then we never use it again why don't we just replace y with a and we get this and it's a little shorter it does the same thing and Notice this line here, y equals a mod m, that can be admitted, omitted because when we mod by m here, it'll knock it down anyways. So that's not going to be a problem. And that's it. Uh, that's our code. Also notice that the bit shift operator here, we can abbreviate that a little bit nicer like that. And that is our final code. So that's the fast modular exponentiation algorithm. That's why it works. And so our whole video so far was just to explain this little snippet of code. All right, to finish the video, I just want to do a little example of how this code can be useful. Let's take a look at the website bigprimes.org. It's just a cool little site. And why don't we generate our, a big prime number, let's say 200 digits. And what are we going to do with this big prime? Well, let's open up a Python environment so we can code the routine that we just uh, wrote and let's paste in that prime number let's call it p and you know by Fermat's little theorem 2 to the power of p minus 1 is congruent to 1 mod p when p is prime so basically let's ask ourselves let's pose ourselves a challenge of evaluating 2 to the power of p minus 1 mod p for this extremely large prime right here. Since we know beforehand that it's already prime, we know that this remainder should be one. So when we run the code, do we get one? We do. So that's a positive sign. I hope you can see the one in the output right up here. And I wanna show you that if we didn't have this routine and we just tried to do it normally in Python, we type in this and we run it, it's just gonna lag there it's never going to finish. It's too, way too large of a quantity to do. And even if we chop down our number to something much smaller, it's still too big for Python to handle in the normal way without using the algorithm we talked about. But if we instead go back and try it with the method we wrote, then no problem. It evaluates 2 to the power of p minus 1 very easily. And I should just make the little comment. Notice how the remainder here is not equal to one. So that tells us that this number P uh, is not prime. That's the most basic primality test there is. So I hope that example motivates why sometimes evaluating large powers modulo some modulus is useful. And that's the end of this video.